Nostalgia seems to dominate everything these days. There's practically a military industrial complex around mining fond memories from stuff you experienced as a child. Well, what about those sweet, sweet Republic cereals like Commando Cody and King of the Rocket Men? Why don't they get any nostalgic love? Well, turns out they did in one of the best superhero comics of all time. I'm Dave Baker, and today on Total Nerd, we're going to explain why you should care about The Rocketeer, the most timeless superhero comic ever produced. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Total Nerd channel and leave a comment too and let us know what pieces of comics history you'd like to see us explain next. Alright, let's do it. Dave Stevens was born July 29, 1955. He was born in Linwood, California and grew up in Portland, Oregon. Eventually, he and his family moved to San Diego, where he would become a regular at many local comic book stores. At 20 years old, he got his first work, where he was assisting Russ Manning on the Tarzan newspaper strip and inking on two different European Tarzan graphic novels. He would later go on to work with Manning on the Star Wars newspaper strip. In 1977, Stevens worked as a storyboard artist on Hanna-Barbera's Super Friends and the Godzilla Power Hour. During this time, he met Doug Wildey, the creator of Rio and Johnny Quest. They would become close friends, and Wildey would become something of a mentor to Stevens. Through the rest of the 70s, he'd work in film and animation, joining a studio with acclaimed master craftsmen like William Stout and Richard Hescock. He would do storyboards and concept work for Michael Jackson's Thriller video, and even work on Raiders of the Lost Ark. The 1980s were a really interesting time for comics. There was a massive explosion of reader interest in black and white books, printing technology got cheaper, and distribution models got to the point where an individual could basically make their own comics and then have it be seen. As such, the rise of things like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, ElfQuest, and Cerebus saw a massive uptick in readers. Nothing says a healthy market like a weird gray pig dude dressed as Conan finding a reader base. Am I right? Because of this influx, many comic book stores started publishing comics. Dark Horse and Kamiko were two of the more successful examples of company making the jump into actually publishing. However, one of the grossly overlooked and underappreciated publishers from this time period is the rarely codified business model utilized by Pacific Comics. Started by Bill and Steve Shanes, Pacific Comics started as a company that would sell comics through ads in Comics Buyer's Guide and other sort of industry periodicals. They then ballooned to a retail, distribution, and eventually publishing operation. The initial titles Pacific put out included Captain Victory by Jack Kirby, Weird World, and John Buscema's portfolio, Warriors of the Shadow Realm. Pacific was able to lure in these massive names by cutting deals that were fair. I know, it's shocking that the comic book company would actually do something good for comics as a whole. Isn't it crazy that Jack Kirby's first creator-owned comic was put out when he was 64 years old? That's disgraceful. You're probably wondering, why am I yammering about Pacific in a video about the Rocketeer? Well, the answer is simple. Dave Stevens used to shop at Pacific Comics, the retail store. He became friends with the Shanes brothers, who said if they ever had anything interesting he wanted to do, they'd publish it. And that's how we got the Rocketeer. The Rocketeer stems from Stevens' love of pulp adventure novels, movie serials, and 1950s good girl art. There's an adage that when you're making comics, make the comic that you want to read. And that's exactly what Stevens did. Something that, that really speaks to me is a normal person doing something out of the ordinary. You know, somebody who's really not that special, but has a an inherent quality that's good, and I think everybody does, and every now and then, when put to the test, it shows. The story focuses on Cliff Secord, a sideshow stunt pilot who finds a mysterious jetpack and helmet that allows him to take to the skies. The book takes place in 1938, and is a calculated throwback to the previously mentioned adventure genres. So much so that Stevens even drew Cliff's longtime would-be romantic partner as Betty Page. Come to think of it, Cliff looks pretty familiar too. Huh. Talk about wish fulfillment, right? Oh man, look at this cover to the Kamiko collection. Cliff is literally Dave Stevens, Betty is obviously Betty Page, and PV. Does that ring a bell? Does this guy look familiar? Well, looky there. It's Doug Wildey, the creator of Johnny Quest. Huh. New levels of wish fulfillment every day. The Rocketeers' adventurers see him fighting mobsters, teaming up with conveniently unnamed supporting cast members from Doc Savage's crew, and doing battle with villains who are and he just happened to be, you know, the same physical appearance as B-movie actor Rondo Hatton. 
you know, it's, uh, it's pretty transparent, but it's delightful. Eventually, in the Rocketeer's sequel escapade, Cliff's New York Adventure, we'll even watch our stalwart hero team up with Mr. Jonas. Not the shadow, Mr. Jonas. No lawsuits here. No lawsuits. This is actually really funny to me that no one gave a shit that Dave Stevens was just like, what are all my favorite things? Who are all my favorite people? Okay, I'm gonna steal those things and put them in this book. Okay, thanks, bye! The Rocketeer first appeared at the end of Star Slayer number two as a backup. It had a bizarre publication history popping up a few pages here and a few pages there, then moving to a few single issues. Sometimes it would go years without publication. Just so we're all on the same page, Star Slayer 2, Star Slayer 3, Pacific Comics 1, Pacific Comics 2, then it moves to Eclipse, and then you get a third issue titled Rocketeer Special, then moves over to Kamiko, and then you got the Rocketeer Adventure Magazines 1 and 2, and then, you know, eventually it concludes in 1995, six years after it started being published at Dark Horse. Since then, there's been many collections and repackages of the existing Rocketeer material. And while it's unfortunate that there's not more in existence, when you see the care and attention to detail that Stevenson put into his eponymous hero, you understand why this book took so long. Additionally, for completists out there, in 1991, Russ Heath, Dave Stevens' former boss, illustrated a comics adaptation of the movie and oh boy, this thing is awesome. Heath, who passed away not too long ago, was one of the master craftsmen of modern illustration. He's definitely worth the price of admission alone. However, if I'm honest, the real reason to pick up this thing, look at that cover. That is the best cover. Look at this guy. The regal pose, the rendering, the attention to detail, the fact that the picture plane gets pushed forward because of the black geometric background. Ah oh, man, it's exquisite. You can practically hear the brass fanfare from the film Stunning Work. Stunning work. As previously mentioned, Dave Stevens worked in the film and animation business for most of his adult life, so it's understandable that movie studios would come a knockin' when The Rocketeer became a cult hit. However, it was sooner than you'd think. Stevens originally sold the film rights in 1983 to Steve Miner of Friday the 13th 2 and 3 fame. This was only one year after publication. After the option ran out, Paul DeMaio and Danny Bilson, the creators of the 1990s Flash TV show, befriended Stevens and signed a shopping agreement. The project was eventually set up at Disney, where the project languished due to some creative disagreements between the studio and the creators. The Rocketeer floundered in development hell for close to a decade. However, Joe Johnson, director of Captain America the First Avenger and Jumanji, was hot off the success of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and leapt at the chance to direct the film. Johnston, a big comic book reader, had just worked with Disney and also had a lot of clout at the moment. So, you know, the movie quickly went from, we don't know if this nostalgia thing is going to work for us, to, yes, Mr. Johnson, we'd love to make this movie. Yes, 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 we think this is our next Indiana Jones. The film tells the origin of Cliff finding the rocket, being sucked up into a plot involving mobsters, 30s Hollywood, and Nazis. In many ways, it's the precursor to the MCU Marvel films. It's basically set up the entire template that all those films rip off. The film stars Billy Campbell as the Rocketeer, and believe it or not, Billy Campbell is Bruce Campbell's little brother. Yes, that Bruce Campbell. The Rocketeer was released on June 21st, 1991. And what did Billy Campbell think of the film? Wow, man, it was like the best movie I've ever seen. It was really cool. The action was great and stuff. Speaking of being excited, Dave Stevens even has a cameo in the film. Did you spot it? He plays the rocket pack Nazi who gets blown up during the failed test launch. The Rocketeer was making nostalgia movies way before everybody else. It's a throwback to a time that very few people who are still alive remember. It's a sweet and innocent picture that... Uh, oh, well, maybe not. In closing, the film is great. If you haven't seen it, you should. It's wonderful and arguably one of the best, if not the best, superhero adaptations. From James Horner's iconic score to the pitch-perfect costume to Billy Campbell's spot-on performance, the Rocketeer film is a worthy successor to the Rocketeer comics, which is the highest compliment I can pay. In recent years, IDW has been producing new licensed Rocketeer sequel comics. If you're interested, the Mark Waid and Chris Somney book, Cargo of Doom, is well worth a look. However, they're not the only Rocketeer sequels that have had rumblings recently. Blake Griffin is supposedly working on a new Rocketeer movie. Yeah, that Blake Griffin. The Hollywood Reporter ran a story announcing that 
Brigham Taylor, the producer of The Jungle Book, Blake Griffin, and Ryan Khalil are producing a reboot of the old Finhead. Will this actually happen? At this point, eh, it seems pretty unlikely, but mm, you never know. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a new Rocketeer show aimed at little kids. Huh. I'd be lying if I said I expected Disney to green light a Rocketeer show aimed at little kids, but the more Rocketeer stuff that exists, the better if you ask me. Who knows, maybe this show will be a massive success and we'll get some momentum on a live action reboot. But honestly, I don't even really need another Rocketeer movie. The movie that exists is virtually perfect. Dave Stevens is looked back on as one of the most technically talented draftsmen to ever work in comics. He's someone who still has legions of fans and devotees. His character has endured and will continue to find new fans well after his untimely death in 2008 from hairy cell leukemia. When you take a step back and look at the creative output Stevens had over his career, it speaks volumes to the level of craft and attention to detail that he possessed. There's probably less than 200 pages of The Rocketeer, maybe 50 covers, and like a handful of stray work for hire jobs. And the fact that he was able to put such a mark on comics history with such a small body of work is simply put, jaw dropping. The only thing that's more impressive than his lasting legacy is that of his character, the affable, would-be serial star Cliff Secord. The Rocketeer succeeds where nearly every attempted revival comic fails. It somehow is exalting its influences while also wearing them on its sleeve, while not feeling hampered or diminished by them. As much as I've made fun of the book for being wish fulfillment, which it is, it's so much more than that. It's a love letter to a bygone era. It's an escape. It's a testament to a world that never really existed. Really, the only way to sum it up is it's the Rocketeer. Well, what do you think? Will you be picking up a collection or streaming this bad boy on Disney Plus? Have I convinced you to finally reinvestigate those perennially open tabs on your computer and finally commission that Rocketeer cosplay? Well, if you like this video, please comment below and let us know what other areas of nerd culture need an explainer. And in the meantime, like, comment, and subscribe for more Total Nerd videos.